All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast, weekly real estate tip. And today here on the podcast, I'm going to be breaking down three different topics, actually answering three different questions that I've received from real estate professionals over the last 24 hours, just like you that watch and listen to this podcast that sent me three different questions. And I wanted to respond to those and do a deep dive into responding to these questions here on the podcast today. So if you have a question, maybe you have an opportunity or an obstacle that you're experiencing inside your real estate business and you'd like to get my input on that, where I can then answer that and do a deep dive on that here on the podcast, shoot me an email, joshua at gsdmode.com. The more context that you provide me, the better about that current situation, the deeper than that I can understand your situation, the deeper than that I can go into my response. So happy to do that. Happy to answer that here on the podcast. All right. So I'm going to jump into these individually, but to give you some context of what these three topics are, the first one is going to be, okay, as a real estate professional, should you go out there and brand your face, your name versus creating a business name, creating a business logo and branding and marketing that? Like, what are the reasons why you might go one path versus the other? Is there a benefit? Is there, you know, what are the pros and cons? So I'm going to break that down. Second topic is, okay, if you want to go out there and generate massive amounts of leads, you got to be different. And I'm going to walk you through what I mean by being different. You don't want to do all the crap that everybody else does in the same manner, the same way. Um, this was a very unique situation, um, but it will be able to articulate the power of being different and getting damn good and effective at lead generation. Um, the last one topic that I'm going to be covering today is how, look, being a great realtor, being a great expert, like you could be the best real estate agent on the planet, know your area, know your product, know the contracts inside now, know all the building laws, regulations, codes, you know, but still struggle, still be broke, right? Like it, it's a sad fact. Um, but the reality is, is he or she, that is the best at marketing and sales goes out there and win. So I'm going to break that down today too, of the importance of, and my belief is, okay, we need to do both. Like we need to be great at fulfillment, but the, you know, fulfillment of our clientele, of our customers. Like once they become a client, like we got to be great at that, but on the front end, like we got to be damn good at marketing, um, at sales, because there's a lot of people that are less qualified to serve their customers than you are out there, but that are out producing you maybe not all of you, but in most cases that are out producing you that are less qualified to go out there and serve people. So we're going to jump into that topic as well. All right. So uh, before I jump into these, just really quick, make sure that you check out gsdmode.com for more additional free resources and trainings. Highly encourage you to jump on my free in-depth masterclass, six steps to three Xing your real estate business in the next 12 months to ensure you got everything dialed in to scale 2025 and make 2025 your best year yet. So that's at gsdmode.com. You can also schedule a 100% free strategy blueprint coaching session with me personally, 100% free, no strings attached, where I will make sure to be you and I on that Zoom call, making sure that you have the right strategy plan to make your next 12 month goals a reality. Um, you can also check out my coaching program, my real estate business mastery bootcamp coaching program, which is hands down by far the most effective and affordable coaching program in the industry. So you'll see a coaching tab on there where you can check out more about that, watch an in-depth video of what's included, how it works, um, you know, what pricing is, commitments, all of that, gsdmode.com. Okay, so let's jump on in to topic number one. And this question was around, now this is somebody, an, uh, an agent that currently is branding themselves, like their own name, their own face, individual agent going out there and doing this. And I'm just going to paraphrase the question without doing a full read of the question just for time's sake here. But the question was around, okay, there's, you know, top teams in, in their market and they're doing a lot of production. They're kicking ass in this marketplace, but they aren't branding themselves there. They have a, a business name. They're branding the business and maybe a business logo versus the personal. So the question really is around, okay, is there a benefit for me to create a business name, brand the business name, brand a business logo versus my own personal name and own personal photo? Okay, here is my response to that question is it does not matter. Now, there can be, there can be some benefits to creating a business name and creating a business logo and going out there and branding that. I'll walk you through 
why I went that path and why it can matter based on your situation and, and what the long-term goals are. But when it comes to overall production, when it comes to the consumer, getting more buyers and sellers, they don't care. It's not going to make a difference, right? Whether you're you know, selling the business or selling you, know, you as the business, um, it's not going to matter on your ability to go out there and generate more leads, more customers, and, and generate more actual buyer and seller business. Um, so, okay, if I was an individual agent, and I'll walk you through what I did, because here's the other thing too, is like, look, you can shift brand names pretty easily. Um, um, I mean, if you can get this right out of the gate, the sooner, the better, but I also, I don't want anybody to be fearful of, you know, um, well, if I, if I pick this path, I can never make an adjustment, can never make a switch. And I'll give an example of that. Okay. So for me, when I first started off, it was my name, my face, right? Cause it's individual agents, dude, it's our name. Our face is really our brand. And that's how I started off. Now I could have started off with a business name, a business logo, but I wasn't you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was 23 years old. I wasn't thinking about creating a team and, you know, creating all these other things down the road. You know, so I started off as, you know, I'm just Joshua Smith Realtor. Um, then as I started building out my team, um, became Joshua Smith Real Estate Group. Then over time, as I continued building my team, I switched that from Joshua Smith Real Estate Group to Revisto Real Estate Group. Now, as I went through these different kind of, you know, branding transitions, again, when it comes to my, you know, my ability and my experience through these transitions of growing my business through buyers and sellers. So lead gen, lead follow-up conversions, it made zero difference. Here is the reason, like with the consumer out there, buyers and sellers, they don't care, doesn't make a difference. The reason why I transitioned and went from Joshua Smith to Revisto Real Estate Group, so a business name not attached to my name. This was this was really threefold, right? Um, so number one, um, and I'm just going to give you the honest and, and real answer, right? So number one, um, running, you know, was build my team, run my team, and I had high turnover rate. It was like okay, an agent would be with me for 25 months, you know, because it was a kind of a traditional team at that time. I didn't have progressive splits. Um, it was 50, 50 split on everything. And I'd, they'd be with me for 25 months, built their book of business, get the expertise down and boom, they would leave me like clockwork. So then I started doing exit interviews, um, with my agents. Cause I always assumed that the reason they were leaving me was just commission splits. And I could get that, you know, right. Like when you're a brand new, you know, agent or a struggling agent, okay. You're happy to pay 50% when you're given a ton of business, but then all of a sudden, you know, you get to that point, you develop the skill set. I get these agents up to doing, you know, 15, 20 million in production within, you know, 18 to 24 months. And then no longer do they need me on that same level. They sort of have them repeat referral business with, I teach them ways to self gen business. So then, okay, 50, 50 split. Like I wouldn't give up 50% of my commission if I knew how to generate all my business too. You know, right. So um, that was my assumption. But then as I started doing exit interviews, I then discovered that that was reason number two. Reason number one was identity. <clears throat> They're like, Hey man, I worked so damn hard to go out there and get that listing. And then I go out there and I get that listing. And it's your name, your face, and all the branding on the sign, right? So it was that ego aspect of it that was the number one reason. Reason number two was commissions. So then at that point, I had a decision to make. I was like, okay, um, I'll let them have the ego because I get it because I had a big ego too. And like, I get it. I'm not somebody that says that ego is necessarily a negative thing. There's times where it can hinder us, but there's nothing wrong with wanting to build your name, your brand, like, and be proud of that. And, you know, um, and, and, and there's a point in time in my career where that was really important to me. But then at this point in time where I discovered this and started doing these exit interviews, I no longer gave a shit about my name and my face being out in the, the community and, and being, you know, like me being the, the name and face of the organization, you know? Um, so I didn't care. I was like, okay, Hey, if this can help me, um, recruit more agents and retain more agents by removing my name from it, branding, you know, that's right. Then, you know, again, what that was the initial reason that led to me to creating going from Joshua Smith real estate group to Revisto real estate group. Reason number two, um, is that, okay. As I was exiting from production, and with all my branding, all my marketing, because I was doing it, you know, at this time, this long time ago. So I was doing a ton of radio, ton of TV, ton of direct mail, like 50,000 direct mail pieces a month going out. Okay. When people are seeing your name, your face everywhere, well, then there can be this expectation with the consumer that you are going to be the one to show up. So then it was something that was easy. It was something that was definitely 
something that we could overcome and we did overcome, but it was still a piece of resistance that wasn't necessary if I just switched the name around, right? Which meaning that, okay, people wanted to deal with me. You know, they've been, they've been seeing my name, seeing my face, getting my mailers for so long. Like they wanted to deal with me. They wanted to deal with Joshua Smith. They didn't want to necessarily have to go deal with one of my agents that was not Joshua Smith, right? And again, we were successful at, you know, overcoming that objection, but it was an objection that came up versus like, okay, with Revisto Real Estate Group now, okay, the, the general buyers, sellers, when we're branding Revisto Real Estate Group, none of me know who the hell I am anymore. I mean, my, my past clients do, but, you know, because we've hit that brand so hard, like nobody no, expects me to, to, to show up. So removing that resistance, right? Um, the third reason um, that you might want to consider this and why I did this is if you're thinking about future sellability, of your real estate business, real estate team, brokerage, and so forth. Um, not to say that you can't easily sell your business with it, your name attached. It's just more attractive to the person acquiring that business, right? Um, if it doesn't have your name attached to it, right? Um, so those are really the only benefits and reasons as why you might want to consider using a business name and a business logo to build and brand your business versus a personal name. You know, um, but then from there, like I started off with my personal name, you know, wh whether it was, you know, Joshua Smith Realtor, then Joshua Smith Real Estate Group, then Revista Real Estate Group. And look, my business didn't shrink any through any of those moves and transitions. It continued to grow, you know, so, so I wouldn't allow you to be fearful if you're like, well, I don't really know. I don't know if I want to go out there and create a big team and exit from production. And, you know, I don't know if I want to go out there and, you know, eventually have a business where I can sell it and exit from that. You know, um, there's also exit strategies for individual agents. And I'm, you know, coach my coaching clients on this all the time. There's ways you can go out there and exit even as an individual agent. And so you're not having to walk away with nothing, you know, if you choose to get out of this industry um, um, and using your own name with it. So at the end of the day, when it comes to buyers and sellers, your ability, you know, marketing, lead gen, lead follow-up, conversions, it makes zero difference. So if you're thinking about going from, switching from your personal name to a business name. Those are the three reasons as to why you might want to do it. Now, if you don't care about any of those three things I walk through, then I would say, okay, I wouldn't even do it then. Yeah. You know, personally, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't, I would just you know, brand your name, your, your face as the brand for your business. Cause what does impact the growth of your business, right? Is your ability for sales and marketing and fulfillment. Um, okay. So then question number two, topic number two, um, this came around. So this is a conversation I had yesterday, um, with an agent that is in a, a, like a very high tourist town. So two high, very high tourist town in Colorado. Um, and, uh, they get how their office building is situated. Cause it's like right downtown in the middle of this tourist town. So they get a ton of foot traffic going by their office. And the question was, Hey, like, for them, it makes sense for them to go out there and do desk time, you know, so some companies call it floor time. Okay. Like in my, if you come, you know, came to work for me in my real estate company, like we don't even offer floor time because we're not a tourist town and where my office is located, like we don't get walk in traffic ever. Right. So it wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be a good allocation of time, but for this particular uh, real estate professional, it did make sense. And they get a lot of people now, if people walk in the door, okay, those are easier conversions. That wasn't the question and that wasn't the struggle. The struggle is, okay, they got you know all these listings in the windows and they get people kind of, you know, wind, whatever you call that, window shopping, looking at these listings. So then it's, okay, when I walk out that door, how do, we, how do I strike up a conversation or how do I generate leads from people looking, doing the quote unquote window shopping? Because the second is like, do they hear the door open? They know it's a salesperson coming out. Like they bolt. They're so standoffish. There's so much sales resistance. And all their competitors that have, you know, real estate offices downtown, just like they do in this touristy area, um, do the same, all do the same things. So then my recommendation is again, and this is, like, this is what I you know, told you about when I let off this podcast is to be different. One of the pieces of advice that one of my first mentors gave me that was really powerful, seemed, seemed kind of you know, silly in the beginning, but, but the longer I've been in this industry, the more I realize of how amazing this advice was and powerful this advice was. You know, um, so he walks me out into the parking lot 
So back then, like everybody went into the office, the parking lot's packed with realtor cars. So this is like right when I got into the industry, walks me on the parking lot. He's like, look around in this parking lot. He's like, do you see any cars in this parking lot that would be your dream vehicle? And I'm looking around, I'm like, no. And he goes, okay, these are the vehicles that all the realtors inside that building um, are driving. So he goes, okay, if they haven't created what you want to create in the future, my recommendation is to not take advice from them. He goes, if you just do one thing during your career, to go, this will help you go out there and create big success. If you just do this one thing, do the opposite of what everybody else says and does. You know, um, so, okay, I want to always differentiate myself and do things different versus everybody else. So, okay, if all my competitors have the same listings and then they're doing the same protocol, same process, you know, so I'm like, look, the other thing that this same mentor told me, and I'm sharing these two stories because this will put this together here, um, is, okay, the, the golden rule is treat others how you want to be treated. The platinum or the golden rule is treat others how you want to be treated. The platinum rule is treat others how they want to be treated. You know, so he's like, dude, if you want to be great at sales, you don't follow the golden rule, you follow the platinum rule. Like, meaning you give people what they want. So I'm like, okay, these are tourists visiting your area. And the reason why they're wanting to, this particular, you know, real estate agent is wanting to capture these leads, even though they're tourists visiting, um, is because a lot of them end up buying vacation homes, second homes, you know, and, and coming back and revisit, you know, right. It becomes, you know, a, 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 there's, there's business to be had there. So then I'm like, okay, well, dude, they're on vacation. So number one, we know that they don't want to be sold. They know that they don't want you to walk out that door. Cause if they, if you do, they bolt, you know, or there's massive sales resistance. They're yelling at you. They're standoffish, you know, right. Like, you know, they're on vacation. Dude. They don't want to deal with that bullshit. You know, um, so let's just, okay, what are they, what are they there to do? They're, they're a tourist on vacation. They're there because they want to see all the amazing things in that area, that town that you guys have to offer, right? And they're there to just relax, vacation, see the beauty, have fun. You know, so I'm like, okay, how you lead generate with that type of person, with those type of leads um, and differentiate yourself is give them what they want. So the example is that I gave them is, okay, I do something. I create like an A-frame, you know, or a big window in the sign, at least during my desk time, that was something like this. You know, the top six, the top six must do things while visiting XYZ area. So, you know, while visiting, you know, Phoenix, Arizona or Sedona, Arizona, like whatever it is, you know, the top six must do things while visiting XYZ, you know, area that only locals know about. It's like they probably, before they went on that vacation, they went out there and did all their due diligence and they know all the tourist spots, you know, but they don't know the, the shit that local, because usually like when you're a local in that area, like, you know, the non tourist especially if you've lived and spent time in a tourist town, it's like, you get sick of all the tourists and all that crap. Like there's the local spots and, you know, they're awesome and epic and, you know, right. So that's something that number one is going to create interest, create curiosity. Um, number two, add value to their trip, you know, um, but then number three, if we look at, okay, like what is a lead? A lead is somebody that you've offered something of value in exchange for their contact information. It doesn't mean that it's got to be real estate information. Okay. This is somebody that has some element of a probability of doing, you know, buying and selling or referring you business in your marketplace. They're traveling there that, you know, right. Um, um, so then, okay, I just got to offer them something of value. So I was like, you know, and then have a big QR code on there that they scan. They have to, you know, enter their email, phone number, you know, whatever gets emailed to them, you know, right? Um, um, so give them something that they want. It's different than any of the competitors are doing. Um, now, I know that you might be like, well, Josh, that doesn't apply to me. I'm not in a tourist spot. Well, you could start thinking about that for your marketplace, for your area. You know, there's there's going to be things that people do that are, you know, fun in your area that maybe they don't have awareness of and, and in different ways, you know, right? Um, but then, okay, just also thinking about this and breaking this down, I'll use uh, for sale by owners as an example. So I have two strategies that I go after for sale by owners with that are highly successful, but are way different than all my competitors are doing in my market and in the industry. What do most do in the industry? They reach out to them. They kind of have the same freaking pitch, you know, that's the pitches that have been around since the nineties or eighties or however long they've been around. They go online, they print those off. Yeah. Right. You guys all know what those same strategies are. They sound just like everybody else. They're doing everything just like everybody else. Okay. I'm going to give the FISBO what they want. So I'll walk you through just really quickly what my two strategies are. Okay. I know what they want. You know, they want to be able to sell their home on their own without a real estate agent, 
the, the, re, the two reasons as to why they're doing this is number one, why they're not using a realtor. Number one is they truly believe that they do not need us. They truly believe that they can do this on their own and don't need us. Um, they truly believe that they can do every bit as good of a job, if not better of a job. So they don't see the value in us. Number two is they want to save the commission, right? So those are the top, those are the two reasons that they're doing this on their own. You know, so then, okay, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to offer them something of value to help them accomplish their goal, giving them what they want with just the knowing and understanding that I know that, okay, no, 92% of FISBOs are not successful at selling on their own, only 8% are. And then of, of then of those, 60% eventually end up listing with and selling successfully with a realtor in the marketplace. So I know I got a 60% shot chance of getting this listing this FISBO's listing, if I position myself right with the right connection, position myself as the resource, add that value. So then boom, when they hit that point that, oh shit, this is more difficult than I thought. I was wrong. Maybe I was wrong. You know, we need to think about considering hiring a real estate agent. Boom. I got the relationship. I got the connection. I'm staying frequent, you know, frequent contact with them. Um, so, okay. Number one, strategy that I do with them. Um, and I not saying that you got to do both of these, but I do both of these, um, and for different reasons, but number one is I offer a free mega open house on their properties. So when I reach out to them. I let them know that, Hey, got nothing to sell you. I respect and honor and understand what you're looking at doing. This is a win-win situation. You know, so I explain that to them of how it's a win-win situation, how real estate is a numbers game. The more potential buyers that we get walking through their door, the higher probability it is that a buyer is going to fall in love with their property and put a full price offer in their property. I tell them that I'm going to go out there, like I'm going to put in all the work. I'm going to do all the pre-marketing, you know, do the whole event. Everybody that walks in that I get to sign in, I'm going to give them that lead list so they can follow up with those leads to try to close them. If anybody has interest, I'm going to give that person to them so they can go write the deal. You know, right. And then I explained to them why it's a, so that I've explained to them why this is a massive benefit and a win to them. And then I got to explain them why it's a win to me because people are like, oh, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Look, okay, let's just say I get 25 people through your open house. One of them loves your home, wants to buy your home. I give them to you. You go write the offer. Like I said, you don't owe me a cent. You don't owe me a penny, you know. Um, um, but then I had 24 other people that came through your open house that for whatever reason, your home wasn't exactly what they were looking for, didn't exactly meet their criteria. You know, a lot of these are not working with another realtor. They're looking to go out there and buy right now. Your home didn't meet their criteria. They're not working with a realtor. I'm going to meet with them. I'm going to connect with them. I'm going to absolutely go out there and sell at least one of those, a house that I can go out there and find for them that does work. So this is a way that we can create a win-win scenario where you can accomplish your goal. I can accomplish my goal. Right. Well, then I end up listing 38% of the FISBOs that I do open houses on after the fact, because then I position myself as a resource. I perform on the event and I'm checking in every single week with them, um, um, you know, to, to continue that relationship. So then the second strategy is I have a free for, uh, for sale by owner kit that I provide them that gives them, it gives them the tools and resources that they need to be successful at selling their home on their own. You know, and then I just position myself as that resource. And I just tell them up front that, Hey, the reason why I'm doing this is, is in the event you are unable or unsuccessful at selling your home on your own and you make that decision to maybe go out there and, and hire a real estate agent. Look, I'm not asking for your business. I'm just asking that you give me an opportunity to interview for the job because hopefully you've appreciated all the work and resources that I provided for you. So I've got a whole resource kit that we give them with ongoing follow up and it you know, walks them through how to do their own open houses, how to create Facebook ads, like all of this stuff gives them vendors and you know all of that stuff. So it differentiates myself from my competitors, extremely easy sales funnels, follow up funnels, right? Because I'm not, I'm not creating sales resistance, you know, so I'm not getting rejected all day, right? They're highly effective, but it's different. So it's much more effective than traditional FISBO strategies. So it's you know much more effective a lot less resistance, more fun and enjoyable to do with a much greater result, but it's differentiating yourself. So be different in all your approaches. So then that way you can go out there and maximize conversions. Okay. The third topic, third question. Um, this was somebody I was having a conversation with yesterday, amazing real estate professional. This is somebody that has an insane amount of experience, not just in real estate, but also you know, understands, you know, worked on the development side for a long time. Like they understand their, their, his specific market, probably as good as any realtor I've ever had a conversation with. Like this person knew every, you know, every, like every little imaginable building code inside and out, city HOA code. Like his just this extensive multiple decade of different experiences 
you know, attached to, you know, growth and in, in development and real estate. Um, um, I mean, he must, knows much more about his market and his product than I know about mine, right? Like this dude, I'm like, holy shit, man. Like if I was going to be moving to your area, like I'd want you to be my realtor, you know? Um, but the frustration during this conversation was, okay, I have, there's other agents in my market that outproduce me that I know I'm way more qualified than them. I have way more knowledge, way more expertise. I see them making mistakes. I've done cross sales with them where I got to fix their crap, fix their, you know, right? Like, so that frustration is there and that's real, you know, right? Um, but look, you can be much more qualified. You can have much more greater expertise um, and still not maximize and capitalize on the money that you're making because the fact of the matter is it is he or she that is the best marketer he or she that's best at sales and marketing that wins the game. And it's a sad fact. I get that, you know, but you can be a shitty realtor, but be damn amazing at marketing and sales and go out there and crush it. It's a sad fact, but it's the fact. Now I'm going to get, I don't give anybody the permission to do that. You should be brilliant at both of them, you know, but this is where you know, I was on a you know free, you know, a, a 60 minute zoom coaching call that I offer to all of you guys at gsdmode.com with this gentleman. I helped him come up with a strategy of, okay, we got to create more attention and awareness. Like you've got this amazing product, which means your knowledge and, and your ability to fulfill on your client's goals and get them the, the results that they want. So you've got, that's the product that you have. That's amazing, but we, you don't have enough awareness of it. So these other people, these strangers that you don't know are not choosing to utilize you because they don't know that your product is even available. So we got, we got to massively ramp up your awareness game. We got to, we got to increase the attention, increase the awareness, you know, so we got to start creating growth content. And then we can, and, you know, once we get that awareness, then, you know, our strategy for the authority. So then people realize that, holy shit, this is the, this is our go-to guy. This is our go-to real estate professional. And you guys all, you guys have all experienced this in other aspects of your life. Like, you know that, okay, the most successful when it comes to, you know, valuable companies out there don't usually have, always have the best product right? It's, it's, but they're amazing damn marketers. They're amazing at getting their message out, right? Get it, you know, right. You know, whatever that is with it. Um, um, I mean, does McDonald's have the best hamburgers on the planet? Nope. You know, but they're the most successful from a financial aspect, you know, right. Um, uh, uh, when it comes to that, so maybe that's a stupid analogy or not, but you know, with this, just making sure that you understand like, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta become brilliant at your ability to go out there and fulfill on your clientele. So that means, okay, your ability to go out there and find them what they're looking for, know the local rules, laws, regulations, know how to negotiate, know all of those things. Like you got to be great at the fulfillment side. But if you're not putting equal, if not, you know, e you know, equal amount of attention and energy, I'm mastering the awareness side, the sales, the marketing, getting that attention, getting that awareness. Doesn't matter how good you are. People don't have awareness that you are even an option your business isn't going to grow. And you're like, dude, I know a lot of great realtors that are broke as a joke. And then I know a lot that make a lot of money that aren't great realtors. Yeah. Right now, again, I'm not giving permission to, to, you know, make a lot of money and be a bad, like do both, be brilliant at both. And that's where your business explodes, right? Because then you're also massively capitalize on that repeat referral business. Cause they know that you're that trusted advisor. You know, you kind of get that viral word of mouth spread. Um, but we got to always be working on that awareness, you know, um, so making sure that you are dialing in both of those components. All right. So hopefully this, uh, this was helpful for you. Again, make sure to check out gsdmode.com where you can check out my real estate mastery bootcamp coaching program, hands down the most effective real estate business coaching program in the industry while at the same time, making it the most affordable. My goal there with pricing, because the number one question I get from people that are shocked when they hear about how cheap it is, because it's like less than your daily Starbucks budget. But my thing is I want to always make sure that anybody that wants and needs my help, I get and understand not everybody wants and needs my help. But for anybody that wants and needs it, I've wanted to eliminate the the objection that or that pain, that point that, hey, I need, I really want need your help, but I can't afford it. I priced it where anybody can afford it, no matter where you're at, whether you're brand new, whether you're struggling, like anybody can afford it. Um, you maybe got to cut out your daily Starbucks, but anybody can afford it. You know, it's not this $1,000 a month crap, even though it's going to be way more effective than the $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month coaching programs. Um, so don't make the mistake of, of, of thinking price equates to value. 
Sometimes it does, but in this case, it absolutely doesn't. Um, so you can check out my coaching program. Again, you can schedule a free Zoom coaching strategy call with me if you want to make sure that you got the right strategy plan to get from where you're at to where you want to go. And I highly encourage you to jump on my six steps to three Xing your business or more in the next 12 months, three hour in depth masterclass, all at gsdmode.com. All right, guys, truly appreciate you. Keep crushing it, keep kicking ass. I will see you next time. Peace.